what did you guys want to do about for your show and that's fresh a fresh take on it well I think what's first of all it's fresh I don't think we've seen is like a quarantine you know they call it a cordon sanitaire where they quarantine off not only a house not only a building but an entire neighborhood there's 5,000 people inside many are healthy but they're not allowed out for fear that the disease might they might get carrier and I think to sort of look at uh, how humanity deals with that, how the people inside the court deal with that, the loved ones outside the court, how they're dealing with that. Uh, I think that's what makes it unique. It's it's not just this ravaging virus that's going all around. It's it's this kind of tense crucible inside the court uh, and also for the people outside of it. And do you find that the drama that you're you're planning on in establishing is going to be more about the disease or more about the people who are stuck in that situation? Well, it's really both. I mean, in some ways, the villain is the disease, but uh, people's behaviors can also drive a lot of drama and situations. And what's fascinating for us about this concept and what we're trying to mine out of uh, the Belgian series, it was based on Belgian format, is there's a lot of shades of gray, you know, and the characters are have a lot of depth and uh, individual characters can sometimes act in ways that are valiant and other times um, uh, might make decisions that are suspect. So there's a sophistication here that's really interesting to us. It's not just good or bad. In the face of an epidemic of disproportions, everyone has to make difficult decisions at certain points in the season. Setting up the show and looking at the Belgian series, how much of it are you going to kind of stay with what they did? And how much do you decide right now to go your own way? Right. A little bit of both. I think already some changes have been made in the pilot that you, know, you need to address and you need to address going forward. So as though it's so, those stories ripple forward, they're going to diverge even further. But then again, the heart of the, the Belgian series is there. Uh, many of the characters and the storylines are there. So it, it's tough to put a percentage on it, but um, it's a little bit of both. Um, just before we start, can you just say your name so we can oh, differentiate sorry. between the voices? Sure. Sorry. I'm Matt Corman, executive producer. Chris Wolf. Thanks. Um, just to touch on something you guys said, can you give examples on how um, this situation brings out the best in people and the worst in them? Uh, sure. I think, look, when you can, um, you know, when you're inside the court and food's running out, let's say, and you run a grocery mart, uh, do you hike up the prices? Well, that's not the nicest thing, but that's also the very human thing to do. Like, this is an opportunity. You, you actually don't think you'll get the disease. You're hoping you don't, and you hope you can make a little money when you do it. Um, so that's an, uh, an example of things going poorly. Uh, and then there's uh, examples of people doing the right thing, be it... Um, Helping someone get to a, safely to another place, or you know, giving over their last bit of food to somebody who needs it more than them, and, and those are the moments, like for me, and that, that that's what you want. Like that, that heart is really important to us, and I think that's what makes it a CW show, it makes it a Julie Fleck show. Uh, so, and it's what we love to do as well. So uh, you see a lot of heart in the show as well. We were all talking beforehand. How do you sustain a show that is, I mean, it can take, you just said you run out of food, do you hike up the prices? Well, if you run out of food right. and all of your people starve to death, how do you do season two? <laughs> how does well, that work? You know? I, I think that um, you're right, just like a virus, it can run its course, mm -hmm. but um, different things can happen. Um, and we feel, and in talking to Julie, we can get at least a few seasons through this contained crucible. But just like Ebola, it sort of is brought down. They thought that it was eradicated in Sierra Leone, and then it's popped up other places or in other places in Sierra Leone. So a virus in and of itself gives you a story engine that's never fully extinguished. They just go into dormancy, and they may pop up somewhere else. So not spoiling anything by saying that it, it could emerge in a different place or amongst different people. So for us, actually... Uh, there's a great story engine for, for sustained storytelling. We just may have to expand the canvas. Can you talk about like what type of time frame over the, the, the season takes place, or like how much time you're covering? We're that sort of as the story dictates. I think you see in the pilot. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. There's a flash forward to with, uh, essentially day 15, um, or a few weeks in, give or take, uh, and. You know, we'll hopefully see what got us to there, but then we may even see what goes beyond that. Uh, for us right now, we're in the writer's room with the writers, uh, talking about the season, going from episode to episode, and, and kind of letting the, the characters' stories dictate the time frame. 
but it is fairly um, clipped. In other words, yeah. I wouldn't say it's a hard and fast rule like a day per episode, but we're not talking about months and months. You know, it's a, it's a matter of weeks over the course of the 13 episodes, which is kind of exciting as storytellers to be able to move forward uh, with that level of propulsion is, uh, it just kind of gives it an engine that is really exciting. So multiple seasons could be just a few months. Yeah, it could be. Um, it could be. Yeah. It, are you? Could, what are your? Have you thought about uh, the possibilities of real world news sort of colliding with your own? Absolutely, and I think that that's a great opportunity rather than a problem. Um, look, I, I do not want there to be another outbreak um, I, I, not that callous, but I think if something like this were to emerge again, it would just put it in the vanguards of people's minds even more than it is currently. Although I will say, and, and you guys can probably let us know what you think about this, this problem and this concept seems to be in the zeitgeist. People are aware of Ebola, kind of concerned about it, and um, naturally self-protective. I mean, I think we're all living in the era where we're trying not to get sick more, certainly than when we were kids. Purell didn't exist when we were kids. We played in the dirt. <laughs> and ate it. <laughs> <laughs> and ate it. And ate it. <laughs> so it's, uh, in that sense, you, you know, this sort of hues into things people are concerned about. Um, with the internet, you know, you can link to a terrifying story about somebody getting Ebola in their eye, and I'm sure some of you saw that, and um, it's just out there in a way that it's, it's a little bit of a negative, I think, of the information age. And in the same respect, though, like, it's out there, but it's usually over there. Like, we in America don't really have to deal with this kind of thing. And as a country, we're fairly parochial. I think we, we don't, you know, we're such a big country, it's hard to really think about, you know, the international stage. And, you know, to sort of take this idea that's actually happening out there in the world, just just happened in Sierra Leone in 2014, and to put it on our own country, bring it to the West, is, is really what the show's all about, is to see what would happen if this really happened here. So, yeah, cool. great. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.